And I'd like to ask unanimous consent that the pending amendment be set aside and that the clerk call up Amendment 2306. Without objection, so ordered. Clerk will report. The Senator from Georgia, Mr. Isaacson, proposes an amendment number 2306. Madam President, for just a moment, I want to address this amendment, and I want to set a stage for this amendment. This amendment was first offered by myself and others in January of 2008. It's an amendment that would provide a $15,000 income tax credit to a family that purchases and occupies as their home any single family dwelling in the United States, regardless of their age, regardless of their income, and regardless of their state. Six months later, in the middle of 2008, the Finance Committee did pass a $7,500 tax credit, which was really an interest-free loan to try and incentivize first-time home buyers to come to the market, but because it was a loan, it didn't do anything. So in December of last year, we changed it to an $8,000 tax credit for only first-time home buyers with incomes less than $75,000 for individuals and $150,000 for couples. And it has worked. In fact, if you look at sales figures from January through August, you'll find, or January through July, you'll find that entry-level housing, that housing under $180,000 to $200,000, has actually begun to recover. But if you examine the marketplace, you find terrible numbers. The following. 47% of all the homes in the United States of America are worth less than what's owed upon them. That's a tragedy. Worst of all, in the month of June, 57% of all sales in America were foreclosures or short sales. 43% were arm's length sales. The housing market continues to flounder, values continue to decline, and equities continue to dissipate. This amendment is added to the Cash for Clunkers bill for a very important reason. As Senator Stabenow will tell you and Senator Levin will tell you, the 45, up to $4,500 incentive to come in and buy a new fuel-efficient car by trading in an old gas-guzzling car worked. It worked so well that in one week the money disappeared. It demonstrates what I've known all my life, that positive incentives cause positive results. The problem we have, though, is it was not the automobile market that disappeared first in America. It was the collapse of housing in the last quarter of 2007, which accelerated in early 2008, which pulled away the equity, reduced the amount of credit folks had, and caused car loans to go bad and people to not buy cars. The only way we'll ever turn the U.S. economy around is to return the biggest engine of the U.S. economy, and that's the construction industry and single-family construction and single-family homes. Right now, we are stagnant. And the problem is not with first-time buyers, it's with move-up buyers. It's the fellow that's transferred from Atlanta, Georgia to Hartford, Connecticut, who can't sell the house in Atlanta because there's no buyer for it and can't buy in Connecticut because he doesn't have the equity out of Atlanta. Now, this tax credit does not take other people's tax money and give it to you to buy a house. It gives you a credit against the taxes that you owe. And rather than buying a depreciable asset like a car, you're buying an appreciable asset like real estate. And the fact it has a multiplier effect. In fact, when we all entered this uh, amendment last year, it was estimated by one economist that it would create 700,000 sales in one year and 685,000 jobs. If there's anything America needs, it's just that. So just as cash for clunkers has demonstrated that positive rewards can cause positive actions on behalf of the consumer, so too would the tax credit do the same. The amendment, by the way, take, the cost of this credit is estimated by CBO at $34.2 billion. January of 2008, they said that's too much money. Well, since 2008, January, we spent $85 billion on AIG, $700 billion on TARP, TARP $787 billion on a stimulus, and we're still floundering. $34 billion sounds like a pretty cheap price to address what is the principal problem in the United States economy. This amendment, by the way, says that it's paid for. The Secretary of the Treasury is authorized to transfer from the stimulus money to the Internal Revenue Service the claims to cover the tax credits filed by homeowners when they pay their taxes for the houses they purchased. And finally, and most importantly of all, there's a rude awakening coming in America, and it's coming November 30th, 2009, because that's when the existing tax credit for first-time home buyers goes away. 
the last incentive for an arm's length sale will have disappeared. And if we think we have economic difficulties now, you just wait until that happens. But with this amendment, you take from the date of its passage, one year ahead, which would be sometime in August of next year, to take the $15,000 non-means-tested credit to replace the $8,000 means-tested credit. If the economists are right, not me, it'll do the one thing the United States of America's economy desperately needs. It will generate a housing market, a legitimate housing market, values will stabilize, we will reflate in the value of our homes, people will buy more cars because of that than they will because of cash for clunkers, as a matter of fact. So we want to take the evidence of the success of this program, take what we already know has worked in a means-tested manner in first-time home buyers, and apply it to every American, because every American is suffering in this economy. Every American deserves us to look for positive incentives to bring the economy back, restore their equity, improve their value, and return us back to a vibrant economy. So I would hope that the men and women of the Senate would adopt this amendment. And to those that are going to say we can't do it because the House is gone, I just ask you this question. If we were talking about health care and one body had passed it, the House would be back here in a New York minute to do it. They can come back in a hurry, and we know it. And restoring our economy is important. Recovering the equity of our homes is important. Re Paying the American people for the dissipation of our marketplace is important. And the home buyer's tax credit will do it. And I would urge my employees, I would urge my fellow colleagues in the Senate to vote yes on the Isaacson Amendment. And I reserve the balance of my time. Madam President.